Hello and welcome back to the 10th lecture on this course on chemical process design. This final part of lecture 10 will start by giving you an example of how to work through the layout exercise applying some of the rules of thumb that we've talked about in the previous parts of this lecture. I'll also give you a link to a 3D representation of a large chemical plant that can be viewed using Google Earth that serves to illustrate some of the concepts that have been discussed in this lecture. Finally, I'll conclude by showing you some good quality examples of layout drawings that you'll be expected to produce for your design project. So, let's think about how we start to develop our layout. You're going to start with an empty parcel of land. This might have road access, and you might also have access to pipe racks. And on, this, on these pipe racks will be pipes containing some of your feedstocks and potentially some of the piping systems into which you can put your finished products. So the first thing to think is how you're going to subdivide what's potentially a large piece of land into manageable plots. And so here on the whiteboard I've illustrated two plots. Remember what we said about plots. They need access from all four sides. They need to be no bigger than 100 metres by 200 metres for fire reasons. And on these plots we might, for example, put parallel trains of plant equipment. Or we might have grouped together high temperature and high pressure equipment on one plot and equipment that is less hazardous on the other plot. So we can then think how to physically lay out these segregated items of equipment. The next thing we need to think about is where we're getting our materials into the plant. And so kit with connections entering and leaving the plant really should be placed next to the pipe racks upon which the pipes exist that allow material to be taken into the plant and also exist to take material away from the plant. And so you don't want massive pipe runs into the plant complex trying to deliver feedstock or take away raw or take away finished product when you can easily place them next to a pipe rack. Sometimes we might also want to think on the edge of the site about putting kit with large connections and also segregated items that may be more than six to eight metres apart. OK, so we've got materials in. What about getting access to big things? So, again, if you've got a road next to your site, this is probably going to be more load-bearing than your access tracks. Also, remember that these access tracks may have overhead equipment on them, such as pipe racks that are internal to the plant, and maybe things like air-cooled heat exchangers, which are large items of equipment placed at elevation. And so if you're going to get a crane in, you don't really want to take a crane down these access tracks because it's going to be impeded both in terms of where it can go and where it can lift. However, if you're on a road, you're less likely to have these height constraints. And so anything that requires road or crane access would really be placed close to those roads. If you've got items of equipment where you've got, for example, tube bundles to withdraw, such as heat exchangers, again, place them close to a road. Tube bundles are heavy. You're going to need to get lifting equipment in. And very often, these are going to need to be craned onto the back of a low loader to be taken away for maintenance elsewhere, either on the site or maybe to a third-party vendor. Also, if you've got items of material with solids discharge, you're going to have to probably get those solids into transport to take them away. So again, place them close to a point where you can easily do that. On your PFD and within your plant, you're going to have items of equipment that maybe don't have stringent access requirements. So don't take up valuable space with those bits of equipment that could be used for items that do have um, stringent access requirements. And so maybe place these items inbound of the roads, inbound of close access tracks. Next, think about big tall things. Distillation columns, for example. We saw in the concluding part of the last part of this lecture, a slide that showed you a big column being craned into place. Keep that image in your mind, because when you're building the plot, you need to be able to sufficiently access the sites that you're going to put these items of equipment on. And you need to be able to get a crane in there, and that crane needs to be able to lift properly these items of equipment into place. Also, distillation columns are sometimes cantilevered up into position, and so you need to have sufficient laydown space to start with to allow them to be cantilevered into position. So they need good access. Place them in places where they do have good access. On this diagram, the circles are meant to represent distillation columns. 
Again, remember maintenance. I've put some rectangles here that are meant to be heat exchangers, and that big purple area next to them is an access area where you can pull out the tube bundles. It's close to a road, so you can either jet wash the tube bundles in place by getting the jet wash equipment in, or you can lift those tube bundles onto low loaders or other forms of transport on the access track and get those tube bundles out to somewhere else to be cleaned off. Sometimes you're going to have items of heat exchange equipment such as fin fan coolers. Fin fan coolers need to be at elevation because they rely on a good airflow and you don't want the outlet airflow from fin fan coolers to affect either people or other items of process equipment. So air cooled heat exchangers tend to be placed at elevation, sometimes over roadways because this is not where you've got other items of equipment that could also be tall. If they're placed over roadways, remember that that therefore limits the height of any vehicles using those roadways. Let's zoom out a bit. Sometimes your process may require other items of equipment such as cooling towers. These can be big and will be placed away from the plot. Also, items of equipment such as flare stacks have exclusion zones around them, large exclusion zones around them, so these will be placed again away from plant. The amount of radiative heat transfer that is possible to get from a flare stack is significant and so you don't want that radiative heat gain to impact the operation of your plant. So keep it a long way away from your plant. Now we need to think about some of the finishing points. Where are you going to put your control room? Where are you going to get people in and out of your plot? Consider the prevailing wind direction. Put your control room upwind of your plant. Put your car parks upwind of your plant so that if anything goes wrong on your plant, those critical areas where people are, and where people will be escaping from, are generally not going to be affected. OK, so here on the whiteboard I've put an image from Google Earth and I've given you a link. This link is to a naphtha cracker in Teesside, which is a very large plant. It has high temperature sections, it has low temperature sections, it has a big cooling tower, it has flare stacks, it has racks of heat exchangers, racks of distillation columns, and there is sufficient data now within Google Earth for you to effectively walk around this virtually. Go and have a look how distillation columns are placed, where they are placed with respect to plant and access routes. Have a look how far away the cooling tower is from other items of plant equipment. You'll see that on this plant there are two major plots housing process equipment. The plot that is on the effectively the far side of this photograph is where all the fired heaters and furnaces are for the cracking process. They're all grouped together. They're also physically segregated from what's termed the cold end of the plant, where a lot of cryogenic distillation occurs. So it's where all the big distillation columns are placed here. All low temperature equipment grouped together. You will see lots of structural steelwork with heat exchangers on. This is where all the heat integration is happening. So go and use this link. I shall also put a card for you on the YouTube video of this. And go and spend some time exploring. You these days may not be able to access plant very easily, but there is a wealth of information that you can use online to at least give you some idea about how plant is laid out. So let's consider some deliverables. As I've said all along in this lecture, you are going to be producing layout drawings as part of your design project. So I want to give you some examples of what would be considered to be an excellent standard of layout drawing, and this standard is the one that you should strive for. So first of all, you're going to produce plan views. Here's some plan views that show the relative placement of equipment and piping. I've also given you in your notes copies of these drawings so you can pore over them in a little more detail. Another plan view will give you exclusion zones around items of equipment for day-to-day -day operation and will also indicate the space that you've left for maintenance. Look at the crosshatch zones in some of these areas which indicate space where heat exchange bundles are going to be pulled out and removed from. Another plan view will give you emergency escape routes and emergency access. And these have been thought about very, very carefully and adhering to those rules of thumb and to those pieces of legislation that we've discussed in earlier parts of this lecture. Finally, you'll produce one or maybe more than one side elevations that show what your plant looks like from a side view. And you can see here the sizes of all the pieces of the equipment. You can see the provisions for vertical access. You can see the ladder runs. You can see the platforms. You can see the discontinuity between successive ladder runs.
you can also see some of the items of structural steelwork in drawings such as this. And this gives a very clear image of what you might expect your final plant to start looking like. So let's recap a few key points. Build out your plot layout layer by layer as we've illustrated in this part of this lecture. Learn from existing plant layouts that you can tour in 3D, for example using Google Earth. These are incredibly valuable because these things exist, they have been operating for years and they have been designed by very experienced people. For the purposes of your design project you'll need to provide plan and elevation drawings for normal use, for emergency access and for construction.